Over the last few months, over on Learn Irish Online Instagram, I've occasionally been making videos looking at fluent phrases, as I call them. In other words, more advanced phrases that you'd only really hear from fluent or native speakers that I don't hear often from learners. I know some people aren't on Instagram or maybe aren't following the page over on Instagram or haven't gone through all the videos. So I've decided to put all of them, I think there's about 12 here, more or less, 11 or 12. I've decided to put them all in one place and quickly run through them and how to use them. Okay. And also, even if you have seen them before, it's a good little catch up. Ibrahim, guys, is Moss Rode for if. Moss Rode for if. So when you're learning, first thing is you probably learn Ma for if. Okay, when we're outside of the Mokanilak, otherwise it would be da. Simple example, ma ta tu, if you are. But a more fluent way of doing it, and again, I want to stress, ma ta tu isn't wrong in any way, but a more fluent way or a more native way of doing it is saying, mas rode gwil tu. Now, I know that seems a lot longer. For most verbs, it won't be as long as that. But it's essentially using mas rode and then rolling into the verb with the go. Okay, so mas rode almost meaning if it is the thing that, if it is the case that, blah, 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 if it is the case that you are. Okay, so another example would be, let's say, ma hewlin she got law if she walks every day, but want to change that to mas rode gshulin she got law, mas rode gmin she gshul got law, anything like that. Using the mas rode, the go, and then into whatever verb you would have used. Remembering that for some of the irregulars that will change, so you won't be saying, for example, you know, like you might wish, if you went, ma huishe, it'll be mas rode gnyachishe, if it's the case that he went, essentially. Okay, so it might change slightly with some of the irregulars, but in most cases, just a little uru on top, okay, after the go. Ever though, guys, is chance, instead of always using bajer, I find learners always using bajer all the time for anything to do with maybe or might. But essentially, anywhere in the language where you have bajer, you can just put in chance instead and it will work. Bajer gamaishi derash galua. They might be back soon. I can also say chance gamaishi derash galua. If I want to change that into probably instead of might, I just add ma to chance. Chance ma gamaishi derash galua. If we're a tree, a gesht. A gesht on this list is probably the toughest of all of them to find one word, which it translates to in English. But you'll find a lot of the sentences in which a gesht is used, it'll mean involved. Okay, so what is kind of in, in question with that? What is involved with that? Okay, so to use that example, katata a gesht leshin. What is involved with that? Or what does that entail, essentially? What is in question with that? Okay, so if you were telling me, um, maybe you briefly mention a little project you're doing and that you're quite busy with it, I'd say, oh, kadata gesht leshan chanskadal shin. Basically, what's involved? What is it about? What does it entail? Anything to do with that? What is in question with it? Okay, a gesht, very useful. Uh, Neil Moore and Ella, a gesht lesh, it doesn't really entail or it doesn't really involve much more. Iver a kahar and shin, marshinja for and so on, very simple and so on, or etc. Marshinja. So we made a chain of X, Y, Z. I was Marshinja. I was doing X, Y, Z, and so on. Very useful. August Arilla is another good one as well, which also means the same thing, and so on, etc. Istoka for suppose, reckon, probably in some ways, but let's just say Istoka is kind of I reckon, even though I'm not making it personal to me, based off context, we know I'm talking about me or in general it's reckons or it's thought or there's a good chance supposedly basically best way to find this out really and to kind of understand how it's used is just put it into a sentence i get or i suppose i reckon i guess i guess essentially that it will be relatively tough okay we have sock in there which i'll explain later it's one of our other words coming up soon but a to use one we used earlier, I guess they'll be back soon, I reckon they'll be back soon, even though I don't have a lum or a dum or me, and then normally it's implied that I'm talking about myself. Okay, next one then, can all or size for kind of, okay, so these are quite useful, you can use them for kind or type in terms of whatever, a kind of car, a type of car, but also just as a filler word, which you're going to use more often, I suppose, can all or size, both meaning the same thing, kind of or type of, okay. I suppose kind of in English we'd normally say as the filler word. Okay, I was kind of tired, we may 
kinaline. Kinaline is just putting the diminutive. The I follow N at the end means the same thing. I suppose it stresses you're only a little bit tired in terms of kind of tired, but not too much of a difference. So if you make kinaline, if you make kinal, if you make size tershuk. Okay, if you make kinal tershuk, if you make size sauce that I got, girl, that was kind of happy with everything, whatever it might be, kinal the size. Nice little filler word as well, even between sentences when you're not sure what to say. And that can be important. People joke about that, but genuinely, when you're learning a language, having those filler words to buy you some more time that you can say, and while you're saying them, you still sound fluent, but it buys you some more time to think about the next sentence or to remember that word you might be struggling to remember. That can be useful. So kinal or size for those two. Marialgo, guys, is very similar to the Masrole thing earlier. So instead of Marial go essentially is because. So instead of always saying mar and then into the verb, mar toshid, we can say marial go wilshid. Okay, it's basically in light of the fact that they are. So in other words, because they are. Okay, so I know in English you would actually be less fluent to kind of use the longer version like that, you know, as a result of them being or something like that. But in Irish it's more fluent to do it that way. So instead of always saying mar whatever, mar written she got law because she runs every day. Marial gumin she a great got law, or just Marial gurin she got law. We don't have to change it to habitual, but the fact that we're saying got law in that specific example means it's quite useful to do so. So essentially, instead of mar and then the verb, Marial go and then the verb, remembering that for some of the irregulars, that verb will change. Let's say it won't be katame, it'll be gwilme. And equally, even if it doesn't change completely, we will need an uru on it after the go if it can take it. Oh, have x je. Guys, another tough one to translate, but essentially in terms of X, okay? We're going to have to use the Tishkinajuk here. I'll explain why in a second, but Ohev Aragajje, in terms of money, money-wise, as you often say in English, but the wise thing doesn't work for everything in English, so I'm wary to translate it directly as whatever wise, but in terms of or relating to, okay? Ohev Sportje, in terms of sports, sports rise, ending to do with sports, essentially, okay? Essentially, how is work going? How are you doing work-wise? Okay. The reason why we have to use the genitive is because, again, it's the side of work. Okay. Ohave ex It's the side of work or sport or whatever we might be talking about. Sock, guys, as I mentioned earlier, essentially is enough when it's beside an adjective. So good enough, sock ma. Difficult enough, sock jacker. I suppose you could also translate this as fairly in some ways, though that's more so recent. So sock jacker, fairly difficult or kind of difficult, difficult enough, anything along those lines. And I don't hear it much from learners, so it can be useful instead of always using on or ro or bjuganin. Again, using all these different ones such as recent would be another good example for this video. And sock, let's say, as well for fairly or enough beside an adjective. Be careful not to use it beside a noun, that would be more so galore or we could use dohin in some form of dohin such as magohin arrogage basically i have enough money okay to magohin arrogage i have enough money oam gahan from time to time another useful one so that's essentially what the main thing with that again is remember where the h comes in so o isn't going to force a h onto the am and we don't need to put anything to split the vowels there but the go will force a h then onto the am the second am Oam gaham, or we could use it for a different one, so oach gahach, for example, oach gahach, from place to place. Okay? And then shin on fa, the last one for that's why. Shin on fa, gul shidimiha, that's why they're gone. Shin on fa, o will madra ega, that's why he has a dog. Let's say, okay? So shin on fa, that's the reason, in other words, that's why it can be very useful, or just to use it on its own after you've explained some sort of an explanation then again say shin on fall or shin on fall the shin that's the reason for that essentially okay so just some ideas guys just a bit of a catch-up again and some things you can be using now and every so often you don't have to be using all those but even if you just pick three or four of those that you think are easy to remember that you like the way they work that maybe you weren't sure of how they worked before because obviously some of these you'll already know probably and just focus over the next few days in your conversation with yourself with other people in terms of what you're writing down in terms of even what you're saying kind of in your own head let's say at times when you're walking around trying to be using some of those even if you're not 100 sure this is definitely right in this use just be using it so you're going to remember it 
and then by the time you're listening and listening to more and more stuff you're going to hear it used always correctly so that won't be an issue then in terms of figuring out what is the best way to use it and how it is used in the correct way listen more and more and more once you're listening to people who are speaking correct irish that means it's going to be subconsciously getting into your brain you use it for x and not for y you use it for b and not for c whatever it might be Shane, guys any questions or any thoughts any other fluent phrases you can think of that you don't hear other learners use too often or any ideas be the it's a golem he's not drop here me the guys long before